Today, Minister Blair will be joined by his parliamentary secretary, Joel Lightbound, <coughs> to make an announcement about the listings and ideologically motivated violent extremism before taking questions. Nous entendrons d'abord de brèves adresses de la part de nos participants qui seront suivis d'une période de questions et de réponses. Minister Blair, over to you. Thank you very much, Mary Liz, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us here today. Today, we have asked you to gather, as we announce, the addition of 13 groups to the list of terrorist entities included in the criminal code. Recent events have made Canadians much more aware about the serious threat posed by ideologically motivated violent extremist groups. These groups are unfortunately active in Canada and around the world. Their violent actions and rhetoric are fueled by white supremacy, anti-Semitism, racism, homophobia, Islamophobia, and misogyny, and unfortunately often in combination of all of the above. And on several different occasions, we have seen the tragic results that this type of extremism can bring to Canadian soil. Last Friday, we marked the fourth anniversary of the Quebec City mosque shooting, a tragedy that left six Muslim worshippers dead and 19, other injures, uh, 19 others injured. Places of worship have tragically been far too often the targets of violent extremism. And there have been attacks on other groups and gatherings of people as well. No matter the ideological motivation of violent extremist groups, they are all hateful, intolerant, and as we have seen, they can be dangerous. We also know that they seek to recruit people with military experience to leverage their training. Countering this group has become an important priority for the government of Canada. In Canada, our public safety and national security officials use a full suite of measures to protect our country and to keep Canadians safe from any threat including the threat posed by terrorism and ideologically motivated violent extremism. These measures can include surveillance, investigations, intelligence gathering, lawful information sharing, and ongoing threat assessments. They can also include no-fly and terrorist entity listings. The threat of ideologically motivated extremism has been identified as the most significant threat to domestic security in Canada. In 2019, as you may recall, the Government of Canada added for the first time International Neo-Nazi Network Blood and Honor and its armed affiliate Combat 18, Combat 18 to the criminal code listing of terrorists. The listing of terrorists can be an important step in our efforts to combat terrorism violent and violent extremism in all its forms. Concretely, listings can help support criminal investigations and facilitate the laying of terrorism-related charges against perpetrators and supporters of terrorism. They also help block the flow of financial resources to terrorist groups when such groups use Canada's financial systems. And that's because when an entity is placed on the list, banks and financial institutions can freeze their assets. It's also a criminal offense with severe penalties for Canadians to knowingly deal with the assets of a listed entity. Listings can help thwart the efforts from sympathizers in Canada by criminalizing certain support activities, including those related to terrorist travel, training, and recruitment. And they can also support the denial or revocation of a Canadian organization's charitable status if it means connections, connections to a listed entity. And it can, of course, make it easier to remove hateful online postings in the context of that extremism. Today, we have placed 13 new groups on that list, including four ideologically motivated violent extremist groups. The, those four groups include the Adam Waffen Division, the base, the Proud Boys, and the Russian Imperial Movement. We also recognize that other forms of violent extremism remain a serious concern, such as those motivated by religion or political. Five Daesh affiliates have also been added now to this list, which include the Islamic State of West Africa province, Islamic State in the Greater Sahara, Islamic State in Libya, Islamic State East Asia, and the Islamic State Bangladesh. In addition, three Al-Qaeda affiliates are also being added, including the Jamaat Nusra al-Islam wal Muslim, the Front de Liberation de Messina and Ansar Din. And finally, we are also adding one international terrorist group, the Hezbollah Mujahideen. This update hopefully sends a strong message that Canada will not to to tolerate ideological, religious, or politically motivated acts of violence. Now let me speak a few moments about process. Today's additions to the list of terrorist entities is the result of a neutral and expert process, which is based on evidence, intelligence, and the law. 
It is not a political process. It's a legal process. Our national security and law enforcement agencies have been monitoring the activities of these groups for a number of years. And it's important to note that assessing potential new terrorist groups is an ongoing process based on evidence, intelligence, and the law. The process is made up of cross-government consultations, security intelligence reports, assessments by the Department of Justice and the Minister of Public Safety to determine if a group meets the legal threshold set out in the criminal code and added to this list. To be very clear, our national security intelligence agencies, CSIS and CSE, along with the RCMP and other law enforcement agencies across the country, have been working tirelessly over several months and even years in gathering the intelligence and evidence that is necessary to support the decisions made today. In addition, that evidence and intelligence is presented to me and it's also examined by the Department of Justice to ensure that it meets the important legal threshold for listing as a terrorist entity under the criminal code. The process is important and it has been followed in this case. There must at all times be reasonable and probable grounds to believe that an entity knowingly participated or facilitated a terrorist activity or has knowingly acted on behalf of or at the direction of or in association with such an entity. I'll repeat, this is not about politics. It's not about infringing upon freedom of belief, association, or freedom of speech. It is about controlling the violent activities of ideologically motivated extremism. Each one of the newly listed groups announced today meets that criteria. It's also important to note that there are several safeguards built into the listing regime to ensure that the, the system remains balanced, fair, and meets the appropriate legal threshold. Any listed entity may request for its removal from the list, and if that removal is not granted, the criminal code allows for a review of the decision by the federal court. The entire list must be reviewed every five years to ensure that each entity continues to merit its inclusion. Our top priority is the safety and security of Canadians. We will continue to do all that we need to do to ensure that Canadians are kept safe from the threats of terrorism and violent extremism. We know that ethnic, racial, religious, and LGBTQ2S communities are often at much greater risk of hate-motivated crimes. And that's why, in addition to listing these organizations and the work we do to deal with their hateful activities, we are also supporting vulnerable communities and helping to make sure that they can feel safe in their gatherings place, places. And for example, in last year's fall economic statement, we included a $13 million in funding over five years to help communities protect their schools, their, their community centers, and their places of worship by installing security cameras, fences, and other security systems, and by helping to train their staff to respond to hate-motivated incidents. In addition, in 2018, the Government of Canada launched a national strategy on countering radicalization to violence. As part of that national strategy, the Canada Centre for Community Engagement and Prevention of Violence continues to fund important new research and intervention projects across the country. It includes community resilience funding for projects that help prevent at-risk individuals from being radicalized, or disengagement programs for those who want to leave violent extremism behind. And we are also doing extensive work with the digital industry and our close international partners on efforts to reduce the impact of terrorism and violent extremist content online. For example, Canada is also a signatory to the Christchurch call named after the New Zealand city where 51 people were killed in mass shootings at mosques in March of 2019. The call includes commitments for all government signatories and social media platforms to address terrorist and ex violent extremist activity online. Intolerance and hate can have no place in our society. Time and again, we have seen what can happen when their violent extremist ideologies are taken to the extreme. Ideologically motivated violent extremist groups represent a serious and growing threat to Canadian society, and we are doing everything we can to respond appropriately. We'll continue to use every tool at our disposal, including the listing of terrorist entities to counter these activities, to protect our country and our interests, and to keep Canadians safe here at home and around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Blair. Well, uh, Joel, over to you. Bonjour à tous et merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. Il ne fait aucun doute que les groupes extrémistes violents motivés idéologiquement posent une menace sérieuse. Ces groupes sont actifs au Canada et partout dans le monde. 
Leurs actions violentes et leur rhétorique sont alimentées par la suprématie blanche, par l'antisémitisme, par l'islamophobie, par la misogynie et bien souvent par un mélange de tous ces éléments. À plusieurs reprises, on a constaté les conséquences tragiques de ce type d'extrémisme en sol canadien. Il suffit de penser que vendredi dernier, le 29 janvier, on soulignait le quatrième anniversaire de l'attentat à la Grande Mosquée de Québec, une tragédie qui a fait six morts de la communauté musulmane et 19 autres blessés. Il serait aussi naïf de croire que le Canada est à l'abri de ce qu'on a vu se produire dernièrement euh, à Washington le 6 janvier dernier. Quelle que soit la menace ou la motivation idéologique des groupes extrémistes violents, ils sont tous haineux, ils sont tous intolérants et ils sont tous dangereux. De fait, on sait qu'ils cherchent souvent à recruter des personnes qui ont une expérience militaire de sorte à tirer parti de leur entraînement. La lutte contre ces groupes est et doit être une priorité. Au Canada, nos agents à sécurité publique et nos agents responsables de la sécurité nationale emploient une série de mesures pour protéger notre pays et pour protéger les Canadiens de toute menace. Parmi ces mesures figure la liste des entités terroristes en vertu du Code criminel. Aujourd'hui, on a inscrit 13 nouveaux groupes sur cette liste, dont quatre groupes extrémistes violents à caractère idéologique. Les Proud Boys, la division Atomwaffen, The Base et le mouvement impérial russe. On reconnaît ici aussi évidemment que d'autres formes d'extrémisme violent restent une préoccupation sérieuse, comme l'extrémisme motivé politiquement ou par la religion. C'est pourquoi sont également ajoutés à la liste des entités terroristes du Canada cinq affiliés de Daesh, trois affiliés d'Al-Qaïda et un groupe terroriste international, Hezbollah Mujahideen. Il s'agit d'une étape importante dans nos efforts pour lutter contre le terrorisme et l'extrémisme violent sous toutes ses formes. Concrètement, L'inscription d'entités sur cette liste peut aider à soutenir les enquêtes criminelles et à faciliter le dépôt d'accusations liées au terrorisme contre leurs acteurs et ceux qui les soutiennent. L'inscription aide aussi à bloquer le flux de ressources financières aux groupes terroristes quand ces groupes utilisent des systèmes financiers canadiens. En effet, quand une entité est inscrite sur la liste, les banques et les institutions financières gèlent ses actifs. Et pour les Canadiens, il faut rappeler que c'est une infraction criminelle assortie de sanctions sévères que de transiger en connaissance de cause avec les actifs d'une entité inscrite. L'inscription contribue aussi à contrecarrer les efforts des sympathisants au Canada en criminalisant certaines activités de soutien, y compris celles qui sont liées au déplacement, à l'entraînement et au recrutement. Elle peut également faciliter le refus ou la révocation du statut d'organisme de bienfaisance d'un organisme canadien si l'organisme entretient des liens avec une ou des entités inscrites. Enfin, l'inscription à la liste peut aussi faciliter la suppression du contenu en ligne d'une entité. Mais il faut être clair, la décision d'ajouter ou non une entité à la liste n'en est pas une qui est politique. C'est une question qui est légale, ce n'est pas une question politique. C'est le résultat d'un processus qui est fondé sur les éléments de preuve, sur des éléments de renseignement et sur la loi. L'évaluation des nouveaux groupes terroristes potentiels est en fait un processus continu et les nouvelles entités ne sont ajoutées à la liste qu'une fois qu'il a été déterminé qu'il n'y a pas ce seuil légal établi au Code criminel. Il doit y avoir des motifs raisonnables de croire qu'une entité a participé ou contribué en toute connaissance de cause à une activité terroriste ou qu'elle a agi en connaissance de cause pour le compte d'une telle entité ou sous la direction d'une telle entité ou en association avec elle. Or, chacun des groupes nouvellement inscrits aujourd'hui répondent à ces critères. Il faut aussi noter que le régime d'inscription prévoit plusieurs mécanismes de protection qui sont destinés à garantir que le processus est équilibré et qu'il est juste. Toute entité inscrite peut ainsi demander son retrait de la liste, et si ce n'est pas accordé, le Code criminel prévoit qu'il est possible d'appliquer en cours fédéral pour obtenir une révision judiciaire. Enfin, la liste au complet est aussi réexaminée à tous les cinq ans pour s'assurer que la présence de chaque entité est justifiée. Pour conclure, Rappelons que l'intolérance et la haine n'ont aucune place dans notre société et on a trop vu ce qui peut arriver lorsque ces sentiments sont portés à leur expression la plus extrême et à leur expression la plus violente. Les groupes extrémistes violents à caractère idéologique représentent une menace croissante et sérieuse pour notre société et on va continuer d'utiliser tous les outils à notre disposition, y compris la liste des entités terroristes, pour contrer leurs activités et assurer la sécurité des Canadiens au pays et dans le reste du monde. Je vous remercie pour votre attention. Thank you, Joelle. We're now going to open the floor to questions. As a reminder, please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. All the questions will be over the phone. Operator, could you please prefer, proceed to our first question? 
Thank you, merci. You may press star one if you have a question. Vous pouvez appuyer sur étoile 1 si vous avez une question. The first question is from David Jungren from Reuters Ottawa. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Minister, firstly, did the Proud Boys or any of the other groups you've listed today pose a current serious security threat to Canada? Thank you very much, David, for the question. And and, and frankly, that's I, I would say absolutely yes. And that's precisely why we have included them as, as a terrorist entity on our listings under the criminal code. Uh, there has been a growing body of evidence um, collected here in Canada and among our international partners, particularly in the United States, of, of the escalation of, of violence uh, that this group has been involved in. Um, it, it is deeply concerning, and, and you know, th although we've been monitoring the activities of this group with, with considerable concern since 2018, we've seen uh, most recently, and, and there is a great deal of evidence to support that there has been a, a serious and concerning escalation of, of violent, not just rhetoric, but activity and planning, and, and that's why we, we have responded as we have today. Now, I couldn't help noticing that uh, this move came only a week after the House of Commons called unanimously for you to do this. Uh, I know you said the move wasn't political, but what would you say to those who might be concerned that uh, you, you acted quite so quickly after the House called on you to act? Yeah, the, the, uh, I, I, I want to be very clear that, that there really is. I understand the political context and, and, and the motivation of, of, of some to, to get out of this and get in front of this issue politically and, and certainly the events of January 6th um, and the, and the, and you know the, the, the public great public concern arising from that not un, uh, surprisingly did initiate a political response but this process of listing uh, a group as a terrorist entity cannot be political it has to be based entirely on on evidence intelligence and the law and and I and, and that's why I tried very clear, carefully to articulate that the work of, of gathering that evidence and intelligence has been taking place over, over se several months and even years. Uh, we work very closely with law enforcement agencies and our national security partners, particularly in the Five Eyes. Uh, and in, in, in the case of, of that particular organization um, in the, with the United States, we have been, been monitoring very carefully and gathering evidence um, uh, that, that, that supports the, the determination and, and the, the decision that, that was made with respect to this. But that the decision, I, I think it's important to recognize that this is a legal decision that has significant legal consequences for those entities and organizations that we list as terrorists. And, and therefore, it has to be based on a, on a defensible a body of evidence that, that does, in fact, provide me with reasonable and probable grounds to believe that, that they, they do meet that threshold. Um, I've uh, uh, gone over that evidence with the Department of Justice and, and received their advice, which, which supports my decision. Um, and and I'm, uh, you know, I want to take the opportunity to commend the vigilant and excellent work of our national security intelligence agencies and the, the RCMP and other law enforcement agencies who have been gathering that intelligence and gathering that, that evidence and, and the work that we have done with our Five Eyes partners, particularly law enforcement in the United States and the intelligence organizations in the United States to come to this determination today. I want to assure Canadians that, that this has to be a determination based entirely on evidence and the law and that we've followed that progress rigorously um, I understand Canadians' concerned, and I think that's re reflected in some of the political discussion that, that, that we've, we, we've witnessed, but that's not the basis of this decision. This decision has to be based on evidence and law. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question est de Mélanie Marquis-Lapresse. La parole est à vous. Merci. Bonjour. Je vais poser ma question à M. Lightband. Un peu dans la même veine, on a le chef du NPD, M. Singh, qui avait appelé à désigner les Proud Boys entités terroristes. Euh, il y a une pétition également. Puis, euh, il y a une semaine à peu près, les communes ont adopté à l'unanimité une motion qui euh, exhortait euh, le gouvernement à, à bouger dans ce sens-là. Comment pouvez-vous euh, rassurer les Canadiens à l'effet que euh, le processus s'est fait en toute indépendance, qu'il n'y a pas eu de pression exercée sur les agences de renseignement? Oui, bien, merci pour la question, mais je pense que comme vient de le mentionner 
Excusez, j'entends ma traduction en même temps, je vais juste fermer le son. Je, comme vient de mentionner le, le ministre, euh, je pense que c'est clair que oui, ça a généré de l'attention politique, puis on a vu la motion du NPD euh, en Chambre récemment, mais c'est un processus qui prédate de beaucoup euh, ce genre d'intérêt politique qu'on a observé au cours des dernières semaines, euh, que mènent nos agences de renseignement euh, responsables de la, de la Sécurité nationale au Canada, qui doivent, pour qu'une entité soit inscrite, d'abord fournir... Euh, un, disons, un, euh, une masse d'évidence en termes de, de renseignements, de preuves, euh, qui est ensuite soumise à une analyse légale très rigoureuse pour s'assurer que ça passe le, le, le critère qui est établi au Code criminel. Et c'est ce qui justifie aujourd'hui qu'on voit ces 13 groupes être nommés euh, et le critère est le même pour les 13 et ça suit le même processus pour chacune des entités qui sont nommées aujourd'hui. Suivi Oui, euh, en suivi, les, toujours sur les, les Proud Boys, je, je m'attarde à qui euh, avaient dit à leur intention euh, « stand back and stand by », qu'est-ce que vous leur dites, vous, aujourd'hui, en les ajoutant à la liste euh, des entités terroristes? Je ne sais pas si la question m'est destinée ou elle est destinée au ministre. J'ai manqué une partie de la question. Mélanie, oui, could you repeat your question? Oui, 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 c'est pour, euh, pour vous, M. Lightband. Euh, je disais que l'ancien président des États-Unis, M. Trump, avait dit à l'intention des Proud Boys euh, « stand back and stand by ». Qu'est-ce que le gouvernement canadien leur dit aujourd'hui en les inscrivant sur la liste des entités terroristes? Nous, notre analyse de, de, de l'organisme, de l'organisation de l'entité est indépendante de, 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 de ce genre de, de propos qu'on a pu observer au sud de la frontière. Je pense que le message que ça envoie pour les Proud Boys comme pour les 12 autres entités qui sont listées aujourd'hui, c'est qu'à euh, partir du moment où une entité est listée, on, on connaît les conséquences légales, que ce soit financière sur les actifs des sociétés, sur euh, aussi le pouvoir que ça donne aux forces de l'ordre pour intervenir et déranger les activités de ces groupes quand ils sont observables ici au Canada. Donc, euh, je pense que ça envoie un message qu'on les avait euh, à l'œil. Maintenant, euh, ils remplissent les critères pour être nommés sur la liste, ce qui donne encore plus de pouvoir aux forces policières euh, pour euh, s'assurer qu'ils ne puissent pas ici euh, amener la, la, la violence en sol canadien. Là. Thank you. Operator, next question. The next question is from Paul Vieira, Wall Street Journal. Please go ahead. <coughs> Uh, my questions were answered uh, right off the bat. Thanks. Thank you. Operator, next question. Thank you. Merci. La prochaine question est de Hélène Buzetti, Le Devoir. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour. Euh, je ne sais pas si c'est vous, M. Lightbound, ou le ministre qui peut répondre, mais euh, euh, une des principales conséquences d'une inscription, c'est que nos avoirs financiers sont gelés. J'aimerais savoir, est-ce qu'on a une évaluation euh, des avoirs des 13 groupes qui sont euh, listés aujourd'hui? Allô? Allô, non. Minister, you want to answer that question? Yeah, th th thank you very much, Joel. And as I'm, su I'm sure that uh, the, the, the journalists can understand, uh, there is the, we're dealing with a, a number, uh, quite an amount of, of very sensitive uh, intelligence and investigative material here that, that assist us in making this determination. I'm, I'm not able, and not, neither would it be appropriate, uh, to discuss you know, the, the detail of that assessment. Um, but let me assure you that our national intelligence security agencies and law enforcement um, are, have been very active uh, in the investigations on this file. The financing of, of, of terrorist activity and violent extremism is, forms always part of those investigations, uh, but I'm not uh, able or prepared to, to, to share the details of those investigations or that intelligence in, in this briefing. It's not appropriate, um, but I want to assure Canadians that, that our, our Our agencies remain vigilant and are working hard with each other and with our international partners in those investigations. So, Minister, allow me to ask the question differently then. Um, without revealing how much money each of those organizations have, can you give us a sense or an appreciation of uh, how widespread their network of resources was in Canada? Thank you. Thank you. And, and within the, the limits of, of, of the, uh, the rules with respect to evidence and intelligence that I don't want to breach, um, there are, for example, a number of ways in which these entities have been able to, to do fundraising. Um, 
through crowdfunding and 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 in in various uh, means, etc. Those are now going to be con severely restricted and and constricted. Um, their ability to raise funds in Canada and for any or anyone who continues to provide them with support, uh, support with respect to travel, um, with, with with gathering of material, with fundraising, all of those things now have can have serious consequences. And and so one of the I think important effects of listing uh, these entities as terrorist organizations, it it creates a number of of very effective tools. Um, for the financial sector, but also for law enforcement to deal with them more effectively. And it also can create um, fairly su substantial criminal consequences for those who continue to support them. Thank you. Operator, next question. The next question is from uh, Alex Boutillier from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Thanks. Um, Minister, I think a lot of anti-hate and anti-racist organizations are going to be surprised that the Proud Boys actually made the list. Um, they're viewed in Canada somewhat different than they're viewed in the United States, you know, disorganized, you know, small chapters here and there. Can you give us any appreciation of, um, you know, what has changed in the agency's assessments, um, whether they be, you know, more organized or you know, small groups, um, you know, that look to be more violent. Can you give us any sense of what has changed in that group status? Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. I think it's a really important question because, you know, I think, you know, there are a number of different ideologically motivated extremist groups that are online and, and that have not met this threshold. Um, we have been monitoring the activities of that particular group for, for some period of time. What I can tell you is, is over the past several months, um, basically, since 2018, we have seen an escalation, and and there is, you know, an escalation towards violence uh, for this group. And I, and I will also tell you, we look at this organization in its totality. And although, as you've you've indicated, and, and I agree, that there there are uh, Canadian uh, chapters of of this organization across the country, um, but there's also a strong affiliation with the the broader organization, which is also very active in the United States. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge as well that in in the um, in, in the aftermath of, of the U.S. presidential election, we've seen an escalation in, in supports that signal an escalation towards violence uh, for a number of different groups, inclu including the Proud Boys. Um, we've also seen uh, acts in furtherance of that, that rhetoric and, and that, uh, those supports for, for, uh, for, towards violence um, in that people have actually gone out and engaged, um, acquired weapons and, and engaged in activities um, which are now subject to to criminal investigation and 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 charges forthcoming in in the United States, uh, which which also I think strongly supports uh, the growing concern around the activities of this group. I also want to acknowledge and and we listen I've listened very carefully um, to those uh, organizations who are concerned about the impact on 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 free speech and 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 freedom of association, um, and, and and as vile and and as repugnant as the, the rhetoric and, and the ideologies of these hateful organizations might be, it's important to, to acknowledge that there is a, there is a threshold beyond which um, that it, it's no longer about speech, it's about violence and it's about extremism and it's, and it's about terror. And, and, and in, in, in my opinion, based on the totality of evidence that my, our national security intelligence organizations and law enforcement have gathered, also, what we have obtained from our international Five Eyes partners, particularly from the United States, I think provides us with, a, with an overwhelming preponderance of evidence that the activities of that organization now meets the threshold of a terrorist entity, and that's why we've listed it. Great. And just on a slightly different topic, the Privacy Commissioner said today that um, Clearview AI, which has been used by several law enforcement agencies in Canada, including the RCMP, their operations were not only illegal, it amounted to mass surveillance on Canadians. Um, back when these stories started breaking, you said that you had not issued any directives to police uh, or law enforcement agencies concerning the use of facial recognition technology. Um, have you done so since, uh, or are you considering doing so now that the Privacy Commissioner has deemed that the activity is illegal mass surveillance? Well, I, I think the advice and, and the findings of the Privacy Commissioner are very important to this discussion, and I very much value the, the excellent work that the Privacy Commissioner has done. I also very much value his advice and his collaboration in developing appropriate uh, protocols and safeguards for the use of any emerging technology so that 
you know, I, we think that that many uh, uh, new technologies can be important in 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 providing s safeguards and and safety for Canadians, but at the same time, they have to be done in such a way which is respectful of Canadians' privacy rights. Um, I I know that there were circumstances where the RCMP briefly used this. Uh, software they stopped immediately and 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 with that i know there's an investigation being done by the privacy commissioner um but but we also i i want to to to, to state how important um his advice and collaboration will be in in developing uh, appropriate safeguards and protocols for the use of all emergency technologies um in, in this regard and and we'll continue to work with him uh, to to ensure canadians privacy interests are protected thank you operator next question La prochaine question de Louis Blouin, Radio-Canada. La parole est à vous. Bonjour. Ma question est pour M. Lightband. Euh, M. Blair l'a abordé un petit peu, mais j'aimerais vous entendre là-dessus. Quel rôle a joué l'élection présidentielle, le saccage du Capitole euh, dans la décision qui est prise? Est-ce que ça a été un facteur? Puis jusqu'à quel point ces, ces, ces événements-là, la contestation du résultat de l'élection, etc., euh, ont joué un rôle dans peut-être l'augmentation de la menace? J'aimerais comprendre là jusqu'à quel point ça a été un facteur dans la décision qu'on annonce aujourd'hui. Oui, euh, merci beaucoup, M. Blouin, pour la question. J'espère ne pas avoir... Euh, J'ai malheureusement la, la traduction en même temps, donc j'en ai peut-être manqué quelques morceaux, mais euh, je pense pas que... Ce n'est pas l'élection qui a pu jouer un rôle dans notre détermination, euh, mais c'est sûr, parce que c'est un groupe, quand on pense, par exemple, aux Proud Boys, qu'on surveillait, que nos agences de renseignement euh, surveillaient depuis, depuis un moment déjà, là, depuis plusieurs mois, voire plusieurs années, euh, mais c'est sûr que les événements qu'on a observés le 6 janvier aux États-Unis, à Washington, nous ont permis d'accumuler encore davantage d'informations, davantage de renseignements euh, qui nous amènent, entre autres, aujourd'hui à être capables de faire cette détermination-là euh, avec les, les preuves qui ont été ramassées, avec les, les renseignements que nos agences de renseignement ont réussi à accumuler, euh, que d'un point de vue légal, euh, ça remplit maintenant les critères prévus au Code criminel pour que cette, cette entité-là se qualifie comme organisation terroriste. Euh, le Canada devient le premier pays euh, à désigner les Proud Boys comme une entité terroriste. Qu'est-ce que ça change? Pourquoi c'est important que le Canada soit le premier pays à le faire? Je ne crois pas qu'il soit important que le Canada soit le premier pays à le faire. Notre façon d'opérer n'est pas en fonction de, de, de qui a pu le faire avant ou, ou après nous. C'est vraiment en fonction de que nos agences de renseignement colligent comme information, nous fournissent. Et ensuite, c'est une analyse légale à savoir si ça passe le test ou pas. Dans ce cas-ci, on a assez d'informations substantielles qui ont été accumulées au cours des dernières années sur ce groupe-là pour nous informer que leur place est justifiée comme une entité terroriste sur la, la liste qui est prévue par le Code criminel. Thank you. Operator, next question. The next question is from Libertium from Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, this, uh, this question is for um, Minister Blair. I'm just curious as to the uh, the use of the term uh, uh, the IMDE uh, acronym, uh, if you will. I'm wondering why why aren't we labeling these? Why isn't the government labeling these organizations uh, white supremacist groups? Uh, you know, right wing organizations, that type of thing. Uh, why why the use of this term uh, to describe these organizations? Yeah, thanks. And I think it's an important question. Listen, hate has no, knows no bounds, and 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 unfortunately, and although I, I, the the group that we refer to today has demonstrated um, white supremacist, racist, Islamophobic, homophobic, and, and misogynist attitudes, um, all ideologically motivated extremism when it crosses the threshold of violence. Therefore, that the acronym of IMVW I think is an all encompassing and, and accurate uh, reflection of of growing concern about the activities of, of these groups that are, are motivated by ideology. Um, and and they're, it, so it's not just politics, it's not just right or left, as, as, or, and it's not, it's not particular to any particular religious background or, or, or bias or hatred, but, but rather in totality. The ideologically motivated violent extremism of these groups is what is deeply concerning. Um, and, and I would point, for example, that the, the, the other groups that we have listed uh, today that also meet that, that definition, the Ottawa uh, Division, of, 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 uh, which, which is a neo-Nazi uh, terror group, um, most, of, most of their hatred is, is anti-Semitic um, and, and, and deeply concerning to us. The Russian imperial movement 
has a political element, but but is also ideologically driven and the base, also a neo-Nazi organization, nihilistic and accelerationist in their rhetoric. Um, the, 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 the group, the title of I ideologically motivated violent extremists, I think is a useful one. Um, it, it, it is all encompassing for those groups. It isn't about um, their bias. It isn't about their speech. It is about their violent extremism and their willingness to, to escalate and use violence in the furtherance of, of their aims and advancement of their ideologies. Uh, that's why we use the term. I think it's an appropriate one. Um, and and it, it doesn't it doesn't limit us, but it, it also I think is 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 useful in in that it, there is a number of different motivations that can lead to violent extremism and and the 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 definition and the the intelligence gathering that we use enables us to gather that information appropriately for all such groups. Thank you. And uh, the a number of NGOs, uh, civil society groups, um, the International Civil Liberties Monitoring Group in particular. Uh, is welcoming the fact that the government is uh, is taking action against uh, hate groups, but it has raised concerns about the use of the terror list and the fact that it exists. Suggests that it, um, it it is actually a threat to Canadians' rights, um, and that there are there should be other uh, avenues, if you will, uh, taken uh, to address these groups and 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 uh, tackle them that would better protect um, Canadians' rights. How would you respond to those criticisms? Yeah, I, 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 first of all, I want to assure them that I understand their concern. Uh, I've listened very carefully to, to their concerns. I've had a number of conversations just this morning with, with them and to provide them with insurance that, that the decisions that the government of Canada has reached and announced today is in fact based on evidence. It's based on intelligence and it's based on that legal threshold, that very important legal threshold that must be met. Um, I also understand the concern that this, this isn't about, you know, a particular set of beliefs or even a, 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 the, the, the various uh, hateful speech that, that presents itself online. There are other tools available to us to deal with appropriately uh, such, such behaviors and, and such beliefs. Um, but having said all that, the, the, the use of the terrorist entity listing um, has some significant legal consequences as well. It's one of the reasons it has to be done so carefully. It's one of the reasons it can't be a political decision. It has to really be one uh, based on you know strong input from our our you know a, a cross cross government collaboration of our agencies, particularly in the national security uh, intelligence field, in law enforcement, and at the Department of Justice, uh, because it, it is it is a, a determination that has significant legal consequences. I understand the, con the concern that is exp expressed. I want to assure those who, those who very much care about civil liberties that, that our government does too. And, and, and it is our intent to always stand up for, for Canadians' constitutional rights, to uphold our charter of rights and freedoms, and to protect Canadians' uh, civil liberties. And at the same time, for those, or for those in individuals or organizations that cross a very important but significant threshold of, of violent extremism that 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 begins in, in an escalation and the use of violence, you know, advocacy, advocating for you know the killing of, of of religious minorities, of women, of of members of the LGBT community, um, for 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 those types of behaviors, there has to be a strong response. I, I also want to assure you that terror, the, the listing of these individuals and organizations as terrorist entities. Um, doesn't stop the work. It, it is. It's another tool, but it's also it, we have other tools available to us within the criminal code, um, with a number of other measures that we are able to take. And I've, I've indicated some of them: the financial and limitations of travel and 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 support for these organizations. We'll use all of the tools in the toolbox to keep Canadians safe, but we will always do it mindful of our responsibilities to uphold the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and, and Canadian liberties. Thank you. As a reminder, we've got, got, got about 10 minutes left now, so we'll continue with the next question over the phone. Thank you, merci. La prochaine question est de Anne-Caroline Desplanques, le Journal de Montréal. La parole est à vous. Oui, bonjour. Merci de prendre mes questions. M'entendez-vous? Oui. Oui, alors ma question euh, euh, revient, je, je reviens, c'était posé, mais je... je je ne comprends pas vraiment qu est qui, euh, quelle est la réponse sur les critères. Qu'est-ce qui fait que euh, The Proud Boys, maintenant, répond aux critères euh, et que d'autres groupes euh, bien connus, comme les Google Boys, par exemple, euh, ne répondent pas encore aux critères pour être euh, désignés 
antiterroristes. Minister, do you want to answer? No, I apologize, Joelle. I did not get a translation of the question, and, and so I'd ask if you would respond. Sure. Wait, I'd but... ask in English if it's better. Um, I'd like to know what exactly the criteria, why the Pride Boys is now classified and, and responds to the criminal code criteria, and, and not the Google Boys, for example, or other groups that were uh, recently uh, involved in violent acts and kidnapping and other things in the U.S., for example. Yeah, and th thank you very much for that question, and I appreciate the opportunity to provide clarity. Um, we have been gathering uh, evidence and intelligence on a number of different organizations who, who have been involved in, in some of these activities, um, and I think came to, to very prominent public attention um, over the past several months, particularly in activities in the United States, but, but they are also of concern to us. Um, th those organizations clearly are also hateful organizations motivated by intolerance um, and, and hatred. Um, they, there is evidence that they have engaged in some uh, violent activity as well. Um, I want to assure you and assure Canadians that the work is ongoing. We continue to work with um, our Five Eyes partners and our national security intelligence agencies and law enforcement continue to gather uh, the evidence and, intel and intelligence. And there is an ongoing process of, of evaluation and review of, of that, that evidence <laughs> when it meets the threshold. Um, I, I don't disagree that, that some of these groups are, in fact, quite odious and, and, and their activities and their rhetoric is vile. Um, we will continue to do the work and, and, the, and the process. I think it's also important to, to, to explain the process of terrorist listing. It's not an annual uh, activity. It's an evergreen process. And so as we gather that intelligence and as an assessment and determination is made that the, the intelligence and evidence may meet the threshold for any particular group to be included on this list, of, of, as a terrorist entity, we'll bring that information forward. Um, the work is ongoing, uh, but but what we have announced today is the culmination of the work to date, and there's more to do. Thank you. Follow-up? Yes, thank you for your response. It's much better and much clearer now. Um, my other question is regarding what is done uh, with the, the members of these entities to ensure that they are actually not involved Yes, yes, ma'am, and, and and I think that's a reasonable concern that that many we we ha may have. We have seen um, a number of these very hateful individuals who move from group to group. Um, we've we've seen a, a number of, of of groups that have offshot from others. Um, and for example, today we listed both the base and the Proud Boys, and and there is some evidence that some of the individuals who are involved with the base. Uh, had earlier origins in other groups, including the Proud Boys. And, and so it is, it is important that there be an ongoing commitment to the gathering of intelligence and the evaluation of an, an assessment and analysis of that intelligence and evidence so that we keep careful track of these individuals. Um, just because they change their T-shirt or, or the patch that they're wearing on the shoulder doesn't really change the true nature of, of these terrorist groups. And so it's, it's an ongoing process. And when we see um, some individuals maybe breaking off and forming a, a more concerning group, as, as is quite often the case, um, then, then we'll continue to focus on that. Like even within some of the entities we've identified, there are individuals, Canadians, who are, are sympathetic and supportive of these groups. And then there is others who perhaps are more engaged in, in the activities and, and, the, and, the, and the criminal activities, um, now terror activities, um, that some of these groups uh, support and 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 engage in, and and so it's it's also in 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 the the for the laying of criminal charges and all of the other means that we can use to to deal with these individuals and these organizations that that work of evidence and intelligence gathering continue, um, and I want to assure you that that's the work that we are very much engaged in. Thank you, operator. We'll go to our last question over the phone. Thank you, merci. The last question is from Justin Ling, freelance. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Good afternoon. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I'm wondering if you, I know we've been around this a couple times already, but I'm wondering if you can get a little more specific on exactly what the sort of um, maybe cocktail of intelligence and decision making that went into uh, these groups uh, specifically. The Proud Boys, for example, have never faced a terrorism charge, best we know. 
anywhere. Um, you know, this Russian group, uh, as far as I'm aware, has no footprint in Canada. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, yes, there was some sort of fear or anxiety about the possibility uh, of, a, of domestic violence from some of these groups. Um, does that mean that there was a specific plot? Uh, that may have been disrupted or considered? Uh, does it mean that you were uh, you were relying on uh, intelligence that may not have been made public yet um, in the court system? Or are you, in fact, just relying mostly on open source intelligence um, that indicates these groups have participated in violence in the past? Yeah, th thank you, Justin. And as I know you're aware, um, our national security intelligence agencies and, and our law enforcement um, utilize evidence and intelligence gathered from a, a very wide variety of sources. Um, I, I will um, tell you that the, 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 without, without, as I've said, I'm not going to get into specific um, elements of, of that evidence, um, except to tell you that there's, there's, there is a great deal of information that has been, that, that is available to us about the activities of a number of these groups going back a number of years. Um, all, all of them have some influence in Canada. Some of them have a more strong presence in, in Canada. Um, but but their their activities represent a, a a a risk to Canada and to Canadians around the world. Um, as as you know, we work very closely, as I've already said, with our Five Eyes partners, and so there is a, a great deal of information and intelligence that has been available and continues to be available. I think it's also important to acknowledge that that the events in the United States, in particular, over the past several months, um, beginning in 2018, with violent demonstrations that took place. In, in Portland and, and in Charlottesville and, and in Seattle, also provided with our intelligence and law enforcement agencies with a trove of new evidence. Um, we've, we've seen, you know, obvious uh, violent activity that took place on or around J January 6th in the United States. And, and as disturbing and concerning as, as those uh, images and those events were, they also provided law enforcement and our intelligence services with a trove of new information which, 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 and quite frankly, many of these groups revealed themselves through those events that I've articulated and other events, um, th their intent and their escalation to violence became quite clear and evident, and we're acting on that evidence. And as a follow-up, I'm sorry, I'm going to wedge two questions sort of into one here, but um, obviously under the criminal code, you have the ability to use intelligence that has not been made public and not been entered into the court system uh, to, to make these decisions. Um, was any of that intelligence instrumental in this decision without going into the details of the intelligence? Are you using classified intelligence that's not been shared? Uh, and, and kind of further uh, to that, um, uh, you know, maybe we'll just we'll just leave it there. Yeah. And and Justin, let let me say that my responsibility is is to examine the totality of evidence and intelligence that is available, um, and, and to to determine its 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 uh, its merit and its validity, um, and 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 using all all of that information that the National Security Intelligence Organization and our law enforcement are able to provide, to determine whether or not it meets the threshold of reasonable and probable grounds. For me to believe that that this group meets the threshold of, as a terrorist entity, um, I then made sure that that evidence and intelligence was also examined by the Department of Justice, um, and and got a very strong legal opinion in support of my determination that it in fact did meet that legal threshold of reasonable and probable grounds, and and therefore then we continue with the process of bringing that before before cabinet and for uh, an order in council, uh, which 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 actually creates uh, the the entity. Um, it's it is the totality of evidence from all sources that is considered uh, in that determination. Thank you, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for joining us.